And thank you, Toad, for running. Okay, coming up next is uh, Castlevania Three: Dracula's Curse. Uh, before we get to that, I have a few donations that I want to get through. Um, first of all, great pride and happiness welleth up within my heart. The Mega Man X 80% Buster Only Incentive has been met. And we are going to be seeing Mega Man X this afternoon. Buster Only. You want it. I want it. We're going to make it happen. I have $50 from general admission. It says, keep up the good work. I love everything you do. $50 from Harrison Geyer. Hey, SGDQ, got to say I love what you, what you guys do and get hours of enjoyment. Let's put this 50 towards seeing that Buster only run because it sounds hilarious. Hilarious. $35 from What's a Photo. Watch, watching AG SGDQ each time it comes around has become a workday staple. Shoutouts to IT for curiously not blocking Twitch.com this time of year. Thanks for everything you all do. This is my fifth time donating to a GDQ in a row, and I couldn't think of a better way to spend my hard-earned rupees. And of course, it is only right and just to kill, kill, kill those animals. Hype! So I'd like to remind you, uh, if you donate at least $50 throughout the course of this marathon, you will be put in the drawing to win the Nintendo Switch, as you can see on the screen now, sometime. It's not on there right now. It was on there, trust me. If you donate $50 throughout the course of this marathon, you could win the Nintendo Switch with BOTW, that's Breath of the Wild, and ARMS, and by ARMS, the game ARMS. Not, you don't get a Nintendo Switch with ARMS on it. You get Nintendo Switch with the ARMS video game. If you donate $150 or more during this marathon, you'll be put in the drawing to win the GDQ customized Corsair PC. You can see it on the screen right there. $150 could get you a chance to win this lovely, Lovely computer. I have $50 from Spring Equinox. It says, Fusion is canon. $50 from Lysol Pionex. Greetings from the Lone Star State. I've been watching for several years, and the hard work and generosity of everyone involved to save lives is always inspiring. Speaking of saving lives, Kill the animals. $20 from Convergence. A $20 donation from our friends at Convergence. A 7,000-person fan-run charity sci-fi convention in Bloomington, Minnesota this same weekend. Uh, forgive me, I am not from Minnesota. I don't know where Bloomington is. Is that... Down the interstate? No? Okay. So my favorite part of Castlevania 3 is there is a stage which sounds like it was taken from a Michael Jackson album. I will be doing the Michael Jackson impression over here behind the host's table mentally. I'm not about to dance. There's like wires and stuff back here. All right. Here we go. Castlevania 3. Take it away, Chelney. Yo. What's up, Internet? All right. This is Castlevania 3. We're going to be playing on the American version, um, which is arguably harder, I would say. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll just get right into it. Uh, what did the, what was the name that won the bid war? The winning name for the Castlevania 3 file name is 
Ooh, Final Pam. Final Pam. It was a rough competition between Final Pam and I'm guessing this is Juice. <laughs> US or I think I'd... Nice. All right, yeah, if we're, if we're ready to go, I'll get this underway. I guess I'll introduce my coach here. We've got Sky Bills, uh, Puexel, and uh, Brett Suzo for the face. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll get this going. Uh, time starts on control, so uh, I'll give you a countdown here. <clears throat> In three, two, one, go. <clears throat> All right, so this is Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse. Uh, what really sets this apart from the other classic Castlevanias is the ability to both uh, pick um, branching stage paths through the game and also pick a spirit helper character that you can freely swap between. But for this run, Chelney is actually not going to be getting a spirit helper and just playing through the whole game as Trevor Belmont, which uh, kind of makes it play a lot more like Castlevania 1 as far as the uh, yeah. the movement and then the kinds of battle strats you use. Yeah, to be honest, Trevor's really been upset that uh, GDQ hasn't had a run that's just portrayed him, so we're gonna try to help him out here and make him feel better. Yeah, so for stage one, he, is, is, he picks up the holy water sub-weapon his first opportunity, which is uh, once you get a shot multiplier, which um, you get your first after hitting 10 either enemies or candles with the holy water, then the next um, small heart drop becomes a double shot instead and then after another 10 hits he gets a triple shot and then triple shot holy water in most cases is the uh, fastest way to quick kill bosses in this game so yeah for stage one he's getting basically his goal before he gets to the boss is to get a triple shot holy water yeah holy water just like castlevania one is really good at stunning enemies so keeping them locked in a single spot can be incredibly useful uh -huh. <laughs> making them uh, a lot less man or a lot more manageable than they could have been. Yeah, so otherwise. he just got his double shot there. These these zombies have a little randomness to their spawn patterns, but he can if they go in front of him, he can use them to get hits towards his triple shot. <clears throat> the ideal scenario is that not many spawn because every time you jump in this game, you actually lose a little bit of time. You slow down, so um, you want to try to minimize your jumps if you can. Obviously, it's not avoidable in certain cases, but. Yeah, do that, that was an intentional damage boost he did to clip through that bone pillar, too. You'll be seeing him do a lot of those over the course of this run, too, just because yeah. which direction Trevor gets boosted is based on like whether which whether he hits the left or right side of the enemy. So if he hits, uh, in this case, the right side, he gets boosted forward while invincible and can skip stuff. Say hi to Bone, or bone Knight. Say bye to Bone Knight. See if we can do something that yeah, I'm not good at. Let's go for it. Uh, oh, it's all no. right. We got the fist pump, yeah. the ion fist pump there. <laughs> no campfire for you this time. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's something I don't really do much of because usually I'm always worried about splitting on orb grab and I always forget to do it. So <laughs> it's all right. Maybe we'll try again later. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, this is, so like I mentioned earlier, you can pick branching stages in this game. If you were doing a grant run, you would take the upper branch that goes to the clock tower, block two, but there is no reason to go there other than to get Grant and enjoy the music. So he's going to uh, to the forest stage, block three instead. Yeah, it's a really fair point. The soundtrack in this game is really good. Uh, something I didn't mention, and I've done it a couple times already, uh, when you jump from three tiles or higher, uh, you'll get into a, like a stunned animation when you land. Um, but if you time a whip attack, as you are just about to sort of land, you can time it so that your whip animation ends the moment you hit the ground, and that will actually cancel the, uh, the stun animation. So you see me a lot of times, I might be uh, jumping up uh, in hopes of doing that. Yeah, these owls are awful, too. You can manipulate their, their swoops a little bit. Nah, that's all right. By kind of jumping up near them as they spawn, but they're, once, they, once they kind of break away, then they're basically random. So he just traded in his holy water for a uh, cross boomerang, which he's going to be using for the next few stages. These owls are not friendly. Yeah, the owls are part of it, but also a couple, uh, two specific bosses he's going to be fighting uh, relatively soon are much easier to hit with the cross than with the holy water. So since he switched sub weapons, he lost his triple shot and needs to build that up again before he mm. gets to the Cyclops, which is the boss of the stage. Yeah. 
It's actually worth noting that a lot of the strats I have in this game are pretty old. Um, I actually learned this game, there's not very many runs, actually, of this game. And so a lot of the runs I found were from like two years ago. So these strats might be a little out of date, but they're still really fun. Yeah. His health is looking a little scary at this point, but he can actually take another hit before he dies, no matter what. Because like you mentioned at the start, he's playing on the American version. And um, one of the there's a lot of version differences between the American and Japanese versions. But one really big one is that is based on how much damage you take when you get hit. Like in this stage, everything that hits him does two damage. Mm -hmm. and and it's OK, because we found some wall meat. And everyone knows how tasty that stuff is. <laughs> so we're safe now. Yeah, so the lower path would be for an Alucard run, but for every other category, he goes straight here to finish the forest. Oh, yeah, we haven't really talked about sub weapon drops, too. Um, enemies can randomly drop certain sub weapons, and that's really bad if he accidentally gets a sub weapon that he doesn't want because he would lose his previous one along with his shot multiplier and that's pretty much as bad as death in uh, several cases and when the drops happen is, is random although it's it's kind of controlled randomness like in runs he can typically kind of know when to expect a drop is coming relatively soon he can start especially in a marathon setting like this kind of hesitating a little bit when he kills enemies to make sure that if they drop something that uh, he won't t touch it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's still random, but you can definitely start to get a feel for when one's coming. <laughs> Normally I'd be having one come up right away, but uh, since I died on the uh, owl room, it's going to be a little offset. <clears throat> and we have even more wall meat right before the Cyclops, too, so this is going to be pretty safe. I'm dumping some of my crosses right now because you want to always end boss fights with uh, zero hearts if you can. Yeah, just so that the score countdown is as short as possible. Nice Cyclops fight. Yeah, that was a good Thanks. fight. All right. The most important part of the run, I'm going to need some serious time. <laughs> yes. <this. laughs> the menu boss is approaching. We have to make sure we turn down the waifu of the game. All right, we did it. This is so painful for me to watch. As someone who loves using Cypher on these runs. Yeah. Just... See ya, Cypher. Oh, Good luck. That, re that rejection. Good luck on your journey <laughs> of whatever you do. All right. <clears throat> all right, so this is one of the longest stages in the whole uh, game across all of the branches, actually, just because it, it, it even has a mini boss along with the final, and then the final boss is actually two different uh, fights too. And starting here, the amount of damage he takes goes up to three per oh, hit. And speaking of bosses, this is really the first stage, in my opinion, where the stairs boss really comes <laughs> into play. It is a 2D Castlevania game. Stairs are a huge issue, and they start off in this level. Yeah. Yeah, we kind of glossed over it in stage one, where you did it a couple times, but in general, he wants to avoid climbing stairs anytime he can, because it's, it's slow. <laughs> much slower than either jumping or damage boosting or falling. He has those at his disposal. I have to make sure I do a slight hesitation here so I get boosted to the right from that ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, really important, obviously. Uh, that's, a, that's a distance that you can't actually make with a normal jump, so the de-boost is actually required uh, if you're not going to take the stairs. Unless you're playing Grant, I think. Yeah, Grant really breaks this stage. In this room right here, Graham can skip that entire mm -hmm. room through a clip. Yeah. <clears throat> Grant also lets you control your movement while jumping, too, which really changes the platforming dynamics. But we're here for Trevor, so. All Trevor. Speaking of, of Trevor here, some of these platforms here, um, they can be really, really, really tight jumps. We're going to see this a little later in the Castle Courtyard stage, but Trevor's jumping is not that good in this game. Yeah, and since Trevor doesn't have any just any movement-related abilities other than damage boosting, he more for, with one really big exception, he more or less has to take the intended route through every screen. Yeah, um, I definitely have not had a drop in a while, so I know. Yeah, the next mm -hmm. uh, the next screen could be a little dangerous. One, yeah. We're gonna have to play it a little bit carefully. Right, say hi to Medusa, and say bye to Medusa. 
Yeah, Cross is really good at stunning her because you can uh, utilize them in the, yeah, the corner there. Yeah, because she spawns on the right side of the screen and then the cross yeah. Yeah. Um, just comes back when it hits the edge of the screen, so you're just getting a lot of hits really fast. <clears throat> All right, buddy. This guy can do it sometimes. All right. Yeah. So yeah, like like we said earlier, he's kind of hesitating a little bit now just to keep an eye out for sub-weapon drops. <laughs> So Chelney grabbed that health refill there because there's actually going to be a damage boost coming up in the next section. Um, he's going to skip an entire room. You can still do that as Trevor. Again, damage boosting off the ghost. Yeah, it's not really necessary, but um, depending on if I do get a sub-weapon, uh, the whip kill for the boss is a lot less uh, free. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I require some health for some boosts if I, if I do do that. <clears throat> All right, birds. These are probably some of the least dangerous birds in the in the run too, just because of how much. Don't how, do it. How, ooh, I say that is that happens, <laughs> but uh, oh. get back here. As far as getting knocked into a pit, at least I'd say those are oh kind of so yeah. Boots. That's unfortunate. So now we're not going to do the boost because I've taken way too much damage already. <clears throat> yeah, ordinarily he would use that ghost in order to boost across to the other stairs. Mm -hmm. Definitely a good thing. That I grabbed the health. All right, so the boss of the ghost ship is actually two fights. First is a set of mummies, followed by another Cyclops. His goal with the mummies is to nice. yeah is to kill the right one uh, last last because the 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 spirit flame spawns out of it and then it has a flying pattern before it goes into the other coffin that he wants to minimize. We got the good pattern nice. too. Uh, he can come out of the coffin and charge at you as well. Um, and it's a little scarier, but the fight is pretty, yeah. pretty simple. And then um, when he kills the Cyclops, he want, ideally wants that to be as close to the middle of the screen as possible, too, because just like in a lot of classic Mega Man games, the stage doesn't end until all of the bits of the exploding uh, ghost are off screen. Yeah, the orb won't appear until after they leave. <clears throat> so this first room in the next level, Curse Castle, all damage boost. I really like the way this room plays out. Oh, all right. I guess we're killing this guy. Yeah, these bone pillars just have a lot of health for normal enemies, so kind of the, the goal in routing is to skip fighting them as much as possible. Yeah, I tried to do a back boost on that bullet, but it's, it's pretty tight, so... Fortunately, these flying gargoyles have a... They spawn basically at your horizontal position, and then they also have a very predictable swooping pattern. Extra cross for luck. Yeah, right. this game has a slight obsession with gargoyles and stairs. We're going to see this later on in stage nine. It's just it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. With some bone pillars thrown in, too. Oh. Like, so depending on which um, cross throw or uh, axe throw he gets from that knight there, he can potentially de-boost uh, to the right and skip going you, up and yeah, around. Yeah, you can manipulate the, the high axe again, but uh, it's kind of precise, and I never really got good at it. <clears throat> yeah, so now that he's done fighting Cyclopses, which are... Well, I guess he's not actually done, but mo mostly done fighting Cyclopses. There's actually another uh, later on. I'm um, switching back to Holy Water just because that's... Uh, there it is. There's the drop. There's the drop. <laughs> I was waiting for that for so long. I was getting nervous. Because <laughs> that's going to let him kill the boss at this stage a lot faster than the cross could. So during this auto-scroller section here, uh, he's just trying to kill all the knights to uh, get, get his uh, triple shot. Yeah, so there's a few auto scrollers like this. There's not much going on in them, so if you want to read a donation, you probably can. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> I have a $150 donation from Handsome Rob that says, Kill the animals. No. Yes. <laughs> $245 from Pure But Limpkin, no comment. My health is kind of low for this spot, so I'll have to be careful in the next stair room. Ugh, it's even worse now. I'm also going to try to save... Oh, that's actually a good drop, because my heart count is kind of low right now. 
Yeah, if he actually needs to fight those knights too, he really wants holy water too, just because if he still had the cross, it would actually bounce off their uh, shields and he wouldn't get multiple hits. So normally I would de-boost here too, but since I'm one-shottable now with only three health, I have to play that a little bit safe. Yeah. We're not out yet and with the woods yet. You do watch for the bird. Oh, and he's being a very annoying enemy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the double. All right. So thankfully, there's a health drop here right at uh, Frankenstein. Yeah, there's a bit of RNG with Frankenstein as far as the, uh, the falling ceiling blocks. Yeah. I don't have uh, as much holy water as I would like, but this fight is pretty easy, so there's not really any danger with the health. All right, now we're out of yeah. the woods. Great job, Chalney. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good stage. Yeah, had some extra damage, unfortunately, so that stair room is a little slow. But yeah, and that bird at the start of the screen yeah. cost you a lot of hearts, too. It just wouldn't get down. <clears throat> and that's the worst part about the birds, too, is they're just... They were the worst, probably, form of randomness in the game. Yeah, especially for Trevor, too, just because the other characters have generally more effective ways of dealing with stuff that's above you. So this is, in my opinion, the best song in the game. There's a lot of really good music, but this one, in my opinion, really stands out. Now, unfortunately, since we don't have Scythe here, we will not be able to freeze this stream, which is, yeah. if you're playing this casually, it's a super fun thing to do. <laughs> yeah, along with getting to freeze the birds. Yeah, I think this stage is quite a bit harder with Trevor than with Saifa. <clears throat> yeah, there's going to be a lot of deboosting um, and utilizing the holy water um, to take stuff out. All right. I'm kind of a little skeptical of another drop coming. <clears throat> you do a lot of uh, hits to these enemies because they have a lot of HP, and so uh, you actually do see quite a few drops in this stage. Yeah, fortunately, if you did either get a sub-weapon or die, there's a uh, holy water in the screen, although it's a little out of the way. That's probably one of the hardest rooms right there. I'm really nice. happy to be out of it. And I've got lots of health, which is really good, so I can just take a couple hits here. Skipping a lot of terribly slow killing enemy. So in this room right here, we're going to get a very traditional Castlevania enemy, the Fishman. When I was learning this game, I asked um, K-Mac, um, how do you do this room? He just told me to be brave. <laughs> That's all you can do here. Yeah, they spawn out randomly, so you kind of just have to yeah, do You it. get a fair amount of warning. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Ooh, I feel nice. a lot better now, actually. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Dagger's gone. Thanks, game. Uh, yeah, other than the birds, drops is the next actual run ender, typically. So right, this is kind of a tough part here. Yeah. Good. Nice. Nice. Hard part's over. These dragons do have a fixed um, spawn pattern, so he knows exactly where they're going to be on each cycle. It was a good fight. Trying to dump as many of my hearts as I can. I suppose to <laughs> the sideways Go long. Uh, bump. <laughs> yeah, that boss is tough. If you misplace your first step, you're dead. That knockback is so bad in that section. Yeah, and just because he's so used to killing the first dragon on the first cycle, too, mm -hmm. if it survives, he kind of needs to... Uh, adjust to where it's going to be. So yeah, we're into the castle now. <laughs> nice! Ooh. Well, I typically stand on an edge and then walk off in real life, If he's going to die, so. though, there, that's, this is as yeah. good a spot as any, though. There is a holy water right there, right thankfully, there, yes. Know. So this screen has probably the biggest um, sequence break that you can actually do with Solo Trevor coming up right here. Yeah, we're trying. We'll see if we can get it here. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that cuts out of not having to go all the way to the right and then climb stairs and go back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, aside from stage nine, this is probably some of the tightest platforming in the game. In this next section, there's actually going to be a mandatory five pixel jump. Even if you're playing this casually, you have to do that five pixel jump. Oh, that jump Ooh. was my bane. That a was kid. a really fortunate deboost, actually. Uh, <laughs> I don't normally get hit there, so. Fortunately, there is some meat in this screen. Which yes. I'm sure he's going to be getting. I'm trying to save a couple hearts here, just because there's a lot of enemies, so it's I find it easier just to stun a couple of them, uh, or stun all of them, as opposed to like 
hoping for a drop, basically. <clears throat> this is the last stage where he can where he takes three damage per hit, so he could have tanked one more hit mm -hmm. there. So yeah, that jump Sky was talking about is coming up right away. Ooh. I wish I'd have known about the setup Chalney is going to use yeah. for it as a kid, though, just because it's this jump. <laughs> nice jump. Nice. That jump should never be taken for granted. Well done. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming into this room with a short whip, which actually really sucks. This could be not fun. These guys, everything in this room pretty much has a reach when you have the short whip, um, which isn't helpful. Oh, great. Hey, buddy. Uh, if you could just stay right... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, pal. A rare cooperative bird. All right, so we got my long whip back. Death has now been fixed. Yeah, this is a very unique auto-scroller going from uh, top to bottom. You don't see something like this often. It does want to get a, cu add a couple hearts for the boss fight, too, because this is another one of those... Uh, Ghost plus casket uh, combos, only this has a twist and that there's a third one. And there's a nice little heart here. I did miss a big heart in that long room with the health, but that's all right. 15 I can make do with. Oh, hi. Hi. Okay, that's kind of sad, but that'll work. Yeah, because ideally he wants more health than this, I guess, for the uh, Cyclops yeah. so that he can take two hits and then just kind of kind of keep the Cyclops in the corner and then if he's just kind of going all in, yeah. um, he, he should kill him after taking two hits. It's kind of unfortunate. I can't get hit again now. he has to play so. a lot safer. Come back. Come back. Yes. All right. That was kind of nice. He can be mean and walk all the way across the room and it's like, well... Yeah, Thanks. and then <laughs> and then when he gets far enough away, he can charge at you, and then that you won't have enough time to hit him before needing to get up there. So then the Leviathan Gargoyle is the by far the highest health boss in the whole game, so he wants a lot of holy water to left to uh, get the quick mm -hmm. kill on that. You may have all heard this next song. Yeah, it's, it's been in a few Castlevania games. Is it just me, or am I hearing deja vu? <laughs> but yeah, this, this stage is where all of the different possible routes through the game link together, and, and also where he starts taking four damage per hit. Yeah, so. the four damage thing is a pretty big factor. Less in this stage necessarily, but uh, in stage nine it becomes, or block nine, it becomes very, very critical to uh, manage your health correctly. Don't do it. Okay. There is a drop coming, so I have to be careful a little bit here. Oh, that's not the strat. <laughs> it's alright. And that's kind of scary because these green slimes, um, you do kind of kill some of them pretty close. So I'm going to kind of do some safety jumps here to make sure, just in case. <clears throat> That's less good now. There so is no health that I know of in this stage, so you have to be really aware. Yeah, and unfortunately Trevor doesn't have any ways to skip parts of this stage, like going through the ceiling. So, um, yeah, he right, we're just gonna have to play this a little safe now. Has to deal with every one of these knights and slimes. There it is. There's your drop. Later, stopwatch. <clears throat> We got lots of hearts, lots of health. Yeah, and if he gets to death with um, with the triple shot holy water, you shouldn't have too much trouble beating him without taking a hit. Here we go. That nice. that knight is a little harder to that was avoid than, you, too than, early. than you'd think too, just because so. of because of the crumbling blocks creating a bunch of lag. Yeah, there's a bunch there's a huge lag spike spike when he walks on screen, so it's it's a little stressful. So fortunately, death has a predictable pattern where he always starts by swooping down. But wait, we're not done yet. And then death too also just kind of swoops around in a circle and then eventually wraps around the screen. Nice. So you can really you can set up that uh, quick kill with that block there. 
All right. So now my speed run starts. Yes. <laughs> uh, the next stage is pretty much really where the stage act or the game really just cranks up the difficulty. Um, I know when I did, I did my blind playthrough of this game oops, pretty recently, um, only back in March, and uh, this stage took me about three hours to get through. Yeah, and I do question if Konami really tested what the boss is like with Solo Trevor too, because it's uh, it's pretty difficult if he doesn't have the uh, the holy water to get a quick kill. But yeah, that that room is is not good, especially if you're on, if you're due for a drop too. Mm -hmm. That's why it was really good to get the stopwatch at the end of the last stage. Yeah, so on this screen here, he's going to hesitate just a little bit in order to delay the spawn of a uh, Spike Crusher coming up. Yeah, there he goes, and then he can just jump over it. So if you thought the enemy spam was bad before, this is the worst room in the game, hands down. Yeah, especially with Trevor. Hey, we didn't jump early. gonna wait these guys out. Alright. Nice. Gamma's just through there is really helpful. That was the real final boss of the game. <laughs> mm. Well, we got the no. doppelganger still coming though. <laughs> There's a much terrible more terrible room still to come. So I'm gonna deboost through this guy. Hopefully he's nice. Ah he was hoping he'd just keep going to the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking earlier about the top-down auto-scroller being kind of special. I'm not, I can't really think of any other NES games that have an auto-scroller mechanic like this, too. Doesn't have a diagonal though, that's Mario <laughs> 3. <laughs> Thankfully. Alright, this is going pretty good. So as long as he makes it to the doppelganger boss with his holy water, it's a pretty easy fight. If he if he had taken a death somewhere, he'd have had to use a much harder strat involving the cross. We do still have one pretty nasty room to get through before getting there, though. That bat's been appearing from the right side all week, and I was just waiting for it to come from the door, so he, he kept his ways. That's good. All right, so this is the worst room of the entire game. Yeah, and I think literally every character other than Trevor has a way to skip most of it, but uh, with Trevor, he does have to go all the way to the left. And then this bird up. is... All right, that's fine. I'm playing it a little bit more cautiously than normal because the birds are the reason this room is terrible. All right, one hit is not that bad, mm -hmm. and we still have holy water, which is huge. Um, I just have to get out of this room, basically, without losing it, and then we're pretty much home free. All right. Nice. Ooh. There is no danger in grabbing that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Everything is fine. All right, say hi to Doppelganger. What's up, buddy? And say bye. Say and now riddance. I can breathe. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, really good stage nine. Yeah, that was good. Uh, there still is a drop coming, but it's less stressful to lose it now. <clears throat> but what makes that fight just so hard if you can't just get the quick kill with the uh, holy water is just that the doppelganger follows you and uh, has pretty much all of your, your sub-weapons. And does four times as much damage to you as you do to it. So, so I'm going to try to hang around the top of the screen here. Uh, those gears create a ton of uh, lag in this game, and the Medusa heads then, when they come on, uh, make it worse. So to try to stay near the top, the Medusa heads then can despawn uh, off the top of the screen. Yeah, 
Yeah, so he's he's both hanging out near the top and also jumping when to try to spawn the Medusas as high as possible. So we were talking about version differences before. If you die from this point on, you end up back at this door, whereas in the J version, if you get up to Drac, you can at least uh, respawn at Drac, not in the US version. Yeah, that, that one thing I think is part of why this game is oh. the notoriety it does for difficulty to... Because they also added uh, bats to the pendulum room coming up to... The health grab was not worth it. <laughs> Thought I would give myself an extra hit. And then I did give myself an extra hit. So I'm going to start trying to build up a double here for my axe so that I can kill the third phase of Dracula a lot faster. And the second phase, really. Um, there is a strat for the first phase that uses axes also. Um, but the difficulty for it, it's very, very hard to do the inputs. So we won't be seeing that. Almost there. Ooh, almost home. <laughs> Are you gonna respawn hearts or just roll with nah, these? Nah, okay. we're good. Yeah, if you We've wanted to farm some more hearts, you could just go back down the stairs and also get more hits towards getting a double shot. We're good. All right. So Dracula has three forms, like we mentioned. Nah. Kind of the idea with this first one is the is to try to manipulate the the big flame so that he can avoid it. But then for form 2, he wants to finish it with 16 hearts so that he can only use axes to fight form 3. Mm -hmm. It's kind of easy to get boxed into a corner by this form 2. Right, nice. With Trevor especially, these blocks can lead to you falling into the pits if you're not careful too. So he's just watching those. And also manipulating the targeting for his lasers with his jumps. And... So time will be when I grab when the orb the here. Orb, yep. Get rid of some of these axes, because why not? <laughs> time. Dad Axe. <laughs> great job, yeah, Shelby. That was a great run. What was the Your time? Your time is oh, 31 nice. 54. <laughs> you got a 31. Nice. Uh, my PB is barely sub 30, so considering the little bit of hiccups I had in that run, that's not too bad. <clears throat> we do get a unique ending, too, for Solo Trevor. Mm hmm. And you little will brief see, seeing of this game's amazing translation. You too. will see from the, the very short credits the, the name you donated for at the very uh, near the very end of it, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> but yeah, this game uh, is pretty challenging to pick up. I've really enjoyed playing it. It's pretty new for me. Um, I I play mostly Mega Man games, so it's been nice over the last couple of years to just start branching into some other genres. Um, Castlevania, SMB3, uh, Final Fantasy VIII. Um, and so it's been really kind of fun to play some other games. Especially ones like this one, where I actually never played this game as a kid. Um, and just the enjoyment I got out of it through my blind playthrough just made me want to play it again. And po potentially learn some of the other routes uh, with some of the other characters later, so. <clears throat> it's a hard mode next time, right? <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Hard mode is pretty, pretty tough. Some very, very unfair things happen. Like taking four damage per hit for the whole game. Mm -hmm. And you really grow to miss the Medusa heads. <clears throat> so yeah, Grant, Grant is kind of nice. Uh, he's got like a higher jump and such. 
and like uh, Foxel said, can move, change directions, mid jump. And uh, Alucard climb walls too. Yeah, Alucard can change into a bat and fly around. Um, and then Scythe has got a bunch of different kinds of spells. So it's there's some pretty cool tech. Like every route with the different characters is pretty unique in its own little way. So <clears throat> here it comes and our hero. Ralph, I mean Trevor. Starring Ralph, or Treble, yeah, it's not Ralph this time. Final Pam. Thanks everybody for those donations. <laughs> You're welcome, Castlevania 3. I'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, thanks GDQ for letting me do this run and we'll see you guys all on Friday morning for Mega Man 4. All right, excellent run, Shelney. That was Castlevania 3, Dracula's Curse. Um,